Hey folks, welcome back to the Repedia world and I am Abhinay Gupta and today again we would continue with the audit under fiscal law, right? So in the previous lecture if you remember we had discussed the meaning of the term fiscal, we have discussed that the law related to fiscal is fiscal law, that means the law related to the government revenues, expenditure and taxes, right? And then we also understood what is the requirement of the audit under this particular law and who is the person entitled to perform this audit right so these were the basic topics that we have already covered in the previous lecture now today we understand that the accountant that we were talking about under section 288 right who apparently turned out to be a chartered accountant that too in practice holding the certificate of practice right so we'll understand that even this person has a certain limit of the number of tax audits or the audit under fiscal law that a particular person or an accountant can undertake, right? So today we will go ahead to understand what are the various ceiling limits available for these auditors, right? So when we talk about the ceiling limit, right? So who has defined the ceiling limit and what is the requirement of the ceiling limit is the first question that we have. So if we understand what ceiling limit means, then ceiling limit is the limit to the number of audits any particular chartered accountant or any particular accountant at per section 288 is authorized to undertake, right? So if you understand, then it is a maximum number of audit that can be conducted by a chartered accountant. But if we look at the Income Tax Act, right, so what do you think is the number of audit it has been given as the maximum audit to be conducted by CA. Again, give it a thought. Why would Income Tax Act give such a limit? That is a limit that will be decided by the auditor's agency, right? So the auditor's department is the company's act. So let them assign it, right? So Income Tax Act has nothing to say about that. So Income Tax Act says that we do not appoint any ceiling. But if you look into the matter, then you understand that even the companies act do not provide for any ceiling limit then who does right so understand that these ceiling limits are being provided to them by the council the central council of icai provides a ceiling limit right and what is the purpose of that ceiling limit number one is to ensure proper allocation and distribution of the assignments right because now if we have a certain limited number of assignments and we have certain limited number of auditors. So we need to ensure equal distribution, right? We don't need a monopoly in the market that you yeah, have one or two particular chartered accountant taking over all the assignments. No, right? Just to ensure a harmonious distribution of the assignments among the auditors available in the market, there has to be specific limit on the chartered accountants who could take over a huge bundle of assignments. Right? Secondly, to provide quality work. Because understand if any one particular chartered accountant takes over say 200, 300 assignments, do you think that person will have the bandwidth of completing that work at utmost quality? Right? Because if we are talking about an individual taking up to us 200 assignments, then on an average in a year, every one and a half day he has to complete an assignment. Do you think it is practically possible for that person? No. He could do that, right? But that would impact the quality. So, there is a specific limit that has been decided by the Central Council of the ICI. Right? So, what is the limit given by them? The Central Council guideline sets the limit to 60 audits to every particular accountant. Now, whenever I say accountant, I do not mean to say a normal accountant. I always refer to the accountant under Section 288 of the Income Tax Act. Right? Now, there is something that we need to understand when we talk about the limit of 60 audits. How do we calculate these limits? So for example, there is a chartered accountant who is practicing individually. It becomes very simple, right, to say that yes, Mr. X has a limit of 60 tax audits in a year. Right? But on the other hand, if we have a firm, then a firm has more than one chartered accountant. If it's a partnership firm, I'm not talking about proprietorship firm. Right? So, a partnership firm has more than one partner in it, either two or three or four or whatever. So, in that case, 
60 would be the limit applicable to the firm or to any particular chartered accountant? That is a question, right? So that guideline again specifically clarifies that this limit is per individual. That means if a firm has say 5 partners, that firm will have the audit limit of 300. That means 60 for each partner, right? Now there can be another situation where one particular person, one particular CA like Mr. X is a partner in more than one firm. Now what in that case? Let us take it as an example. The firm A has three partners. A1, A2, A3. Right? Firm B also has three partners. A1, B2, B3. So A1 is common in both. Right? So if we look at firm A individually, then firm A should have 60 into 3 that is 180 limit and firm B should also have 60 into 3 that is 180 limit but if we actually look into the crux then we have only 5 partners over there A1, A2, A3, B2 and B3 right we do not have B1 5 partners they have together got how many assignments 360 right so that is why they say that if one single person is a partner in more than one firm then the limit for that person will be calculated keeping in mind all the firms that he is a partner in, right? So if as per firm A, he has taken over 40 audits, he cannot take more than 20 audits in firm B. So his individual, as an individual capacity, his limits will be considered, taking both the firms in consideration. Are you getting the point? Right? Now there can also be a situation that the person works in individual capacity as well as works with the firm. Again, ground rule that the limit of 60 has been specified for every particular individual. So this individual, if in his personal capacity he has taken up 20, then in the capacity of a partner, he could take up 40 more. Right? If in an individual capacity he has 30, he could take up 30 more. If in individual capacity he has 40 audits, he could take up only 20 more in the partnership form. So if we look at the crux of all this discussion, Right? Then it is a simple one-liner that any particular individual who is an accountant as per the definition of 288 right, can conduct not more than 60 audits in a year. Right? And this has been specified by the guidelines of the Central Council. It's as simple as that. Always remember we need to calculate as per every single individual and we do not calculate in totality. Okay with that? Now, after understanding all these things, right, there is one more specific thing that we need to understand when we are talking about the ceiling limits, right. So, when we talk about these 60 assignments, right, so how do we consider which assignments will be calculated in the number 60? Will all the tax assignment, tax audit assignment be considered even though it's a very small assignment? No. So let us see what are the kinds of assignment that will not be considered, right? So audits not considered under the ceiling limit would be the audits which are conducted under 44AD, 44EE and 44AF, right? Now if you understand the section 44AD that all these sections they talk about the presumptive taxation concept, right? Later in the chapter we will understand what presumptive taxation is and we will in detail go ahead to understand Section 44 EE, BB, BBB and all those AD and all those sections, right? Although you will be covering it in detail when you go ahead with the study of the direct tax, but we are teaching it with an assumption that the student may not have started group 2 and preparing for only group 1. So these things you may not be knowing as per your direct tax subject. So we will also be sharing the facts about those topics in the lecture over here, right? So when we talk about 44 AD in presumptive taxation, so 44 AD stands for small taxpayers and for them 8% of the turnover is decided. So there is no hustle bustle to calculate the tax. Okay, this is the turnover, this is 8% done. It's a very small assignment. So do you think 60 or 70 of these kinds of assignments cannot be done by an individual? No, it can easily be done. Right over here, he's not supposed to get into the real calculation of stuff. That is just okay. Taken up the turnover, apply 8% and that's over. 44 A, which is in the business of supplying, leasing or hiring of the goods, of the trucks, right? So in that case, again it is 8% of the turnover. 
If you talk about EF, the business of retail trading of goods, it is 5% of the turnover. Right? So these actually, why are they not included in the ceiling limit? The simple concept is that these are very small audits that can be handled in any number by a chartered accountant. Right? So we will not be including these into the limit. Now you understand, if we put up a limit of 60 and individual gets 60 of these kinds of audit, he will not be doing anything for the entire year. Because our purpose is to ensure quality and to ensure equal distribution. Our purpose is not to restrict the potential of a chartered accountant. Right? Now again, another concept to understand is the assignments that will be clubbed as single for this calculation. So if a chartered accountant as a partnership firm or as an individual is taking over an audit of a company which has its headquarter in some position in some geographical location and multiple branches around and he has the audit of the entire thing. Now if that particular company has 20 branches, does that mean he has exhausted his 21 audit limits, one as a headquarter and 20 branches? The answer is no. The entire company over here is just one single count for that auditor. Right? Similarly, if he does not take over the headquarter, for example, but he head office, but he takes over multiple branches, right? Those multiple branches will cumulatively be just one audit assignment for that person. I play with this concept. So when we talk about the ceiling limit, ceiling is there for a purpose to ensure quality and fair distribution. Ceiling has been given by the Central Council guideline. Ceilings are for every individual, maybe in any capacity, in partnership capacity, individual capacity, whatever capacity, but the calculation will be done on individual front, counting the number of individuals, right? An audit under section 44 AD, AE and AF will not be considered in the ceiling limit and assignments that will be done where you club the head office and branches will be considered as one. Right? So now I hope the ceiling limit for the tax audit of for any individual chartered accountant is clear with you. Right? We'll move ahead with the chapter with the other topics of the chapter in the next lecture. So until then, this is Abhinay Gupta bidding you goodbye. Thank you. See ya.